And I want to thank very much all of our uh, guests today. It's great to hear from you. Um, I think that we have such a huge opportunity in this moment to make significant strides forward on infrastructure. And I approach this conversation from the former as being a former chief of staff for the mayor of Minneapolis and understanding what mayors uh, go through as they're trying to address um, real needs in their community. And I'd like to focus in on two of those if I can today. The first is affordable housing. And if we have a moment, I'd like to also talk a little bit about clean energy infrastructure. These are two things that I think are essential to include in the um, American Jobs Plan infrastructure package that the Senate is working on. So I suspect that as mayors, you all are experiencing firsthand the crisis of housing in our country, a complete mismatch between supply and demand for housing, especially affordable housing, I and mean, especially for renters. I'm interested in hearing what it's like in your cities. And there is a shortage of housing stock, um, and this, I think, is something that we can really address, both rental housing as well as home ownership. Now, what I hear in Minnesota is that the cost of new construction is a significant barrier to building, especially in rural areas, but also in small towns and, and big cities. Um, and that we're seeing uh, sort of all sorts of challenges with supply chain as we build out of COVID, literally, particularly lumber, for example. Um, by some uh, estimates, the recent lumber shortage has raised the price of building a new home by almost $40,000. Um, and then also there are issues, uh, you know, just so many issues. So let me ask the mayors on uh, that that, that we're, are with us today. What barriers do you see to building new housing in your community? And how can Congress help you as local leaders address these challenges? Um, and um, maybe I'll start uh, with you, Mayor Woods. Well, thank you, Chair Smith. Really appreciate it. If Senator Brown calls you Chair Smith, I'm going to call you Chair Smith as well. So um, I just wanted to say, so on our end, we actually in the city of Tempe recognize from a study that was conducted even before I became mayor, that we need 11,000 additional units of housing by the year 2040 just to keep pace with current demand. Some of the challenges, quite honestly, are not just simply the cost of lumber and steel and everything else. It's the fact that our state legislature has implemented policies such as we are the only state in the entire country without tax increment financing as a tool. Inclusionary zoning, rent control, those are all practices that have been banned by our state legislature. But the reality is from being a mayor on the ground, and you know this from being a former chief of staff to a mayor, that you know we still have an obligation to provide housing and solutions to our cities. I can't just as a mayor, blame the state legislature and wash my hands of it. We have to figure out other ways to get things done. So we've currently invested $1.2 million of city-owned funds from our Hometown for All program, which we developed in a proprietary fashion here, to clean up five different lots of land along our light rail corridor for development. The purpose of that is to make sure that when we're giving land to developers, they're actually getting clean dirt without the remediation costs, which allows for them to truly deliver affordable and workforce housing solutions. Solutions. And we think with all of the, what we're currently doing just as a city, we will get in the next couple of years 325 units of new affordable rental housing and 50 more affordable home ownership units as well. But that, as we said, from the 11,000 units I first talked about, that only scratches the surface. So we need additional support from the federal government to make sure that everyone can continue to live and work within our city, regardless of income and regardless of occupation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Mayor Andrus, I'm sure you experience what mayors in my state experience, which is that a lack of access to housing becomes a limiting factor on economic growth uh, because people, you know, companies can't find people to work if there aren't places for them to live. And Bozeman is a fast rise, uh, rate growing community. Um, how can the federal government help communities like Bozeman on housing? Well, I um, thank you for the question. I agree that, um, you know, we are one of the fastest growing uh, cities in the entire country and we are doing everything we can uh, reducing impact fees and reducing minimum lot sizes and parking requirements but i think where the government can help is to look at the existing programs and allow more flexibility and access in those particular areas particularly when you think about the size of bozeman almost 50,000 we we fall you know, within the cracks there we're we're not big enough to be a city we're not uh, we're too big 
big um, to be considered rural. So I think um, looking at those existing programs and really thinking about flexibility there. And I would also just add that preemption is becoming a huge issue in Bozeman and in Montana as well, with the legislature taking away tools, as I mentioned in my testimony, like inclusionary zoning. We also have a, you know, real short um, houses that do come on the market. They're on for less than a month. So our turnover is quite rapid. Right. Thank you very much, Chair Brown. I'll hold my uh, clean energy uh, questions uh, for later if we have time.